boys and girls. I am here to read you chapter eight and nine of the report card. Um, if you're like me, you're really wondering what Nora is up to at this point. It seems that her actions couldn't really bring anything good for her. She's um, gotten all D's on her report card, even though she's super smart. Um, she's been through this meeting with her parents and the um, teachers and principal at school, and she's pretended that she has no clue what's going on and said things that didn't really even make sense. So I'm really wondering what she's up to. This chapter is called Roadkill. I am also very curious what that title would refer to. So let's read and find out. There was a dead squirrel in front of the school on Tuesday morning. It had been there a while, and a group of walkers were out on the sidewalk, cheering whenever it got run over again by a passing car or a bus. It was not a nice way to start the school day, and it didn't exactly make me feel proud to be a human. In homeroom, Mrs. Noyes handed me a note. Please report to Dr. Trendler's office immediately after lunch and plan to stay there during 6th and 7th periods. Which was lousy news. That was during science and music, two of my favorite classes. And I knew what would be happening. Evaluation of me. We had free reading time at the beginning of first period language arts, and Stephen came and sat beside me on the pillows in the reading corner. He held up his book and whispered, I heard about your big meeting yesterday. You did, I asked. How? How, said Stephen, because it's all over the school, that's how. I heard that Jenny Ashton was in the nurse's room after school. She saw Mrs. Byrne take you to the office, and she saw all the teachers and your mom and dad. Everyone knows you got bad grades, too. I guess that's kind of my fault, because I told Ellen and she told Jenny. Sorry about that, and I'm really sorry you're in so much trouble. Did they yell at you and stuff? Of course they didn't, I said, and I'm not in trouble. Stephen frowned and said, you sure? Because my mom would put me in a military school or something if I got even one D, let alone a bunch of them. And Jenny said you were crying when you came out of the office, and your mom was dragging you by the arm. What? That's a lie. And I said it so loud that Mrs. Noyes looked up from her book and frowned at me. So I pretended to read until the coast was clear. And then I hissed, no one got yelled at. And no one even came close to crying, least of all me. Oh, that Jenny Ashton is going to get it. So there are some rumors flying around Nora's school about the meeting she was at, right? I want you to be thinking about... Um, how these rumors are inaccurate or untrue, that will be one of your questions today. Stephen needed more proof that I hadn't been tortured in the meeting. He said, so if they didn't yell at you, what did everyone say? Nothing much, I whispered. My mom wanted to know how come she didn't get any warning about my D's, and the teachers had to explain why I got the bad grades. It was all pretty stupid got bad grades because I did bad on some tests, duh. And now they want me to take some more tests to see if I'm as dumb as they think I am. But you're not dumb, Stephen said. Even I know that, and I really am dumb. I pushed him on the arm. Don't ever say that, Stephen. I hate it when you say that. He shrugged. You're the one who always says you have to face facts. So face it. I'm dumb. I pushed him again, and that was one too many disturbances. Nora, Mrs. Noyes was using her soft reading time voice. Either read quietly or I will find you some other work and another place to sit. Final warning. I nodded and put my nose in my book, but whispered to Stephen, to Stephen, bad test grades do not mean you are dumb and I am not in trouble. And if you see that Jenny Ashton, you tell her to start fixing those rotten rumors before I fix her. When I went to my locker after first period, Charlotte Kendall came up to me. Charlotte wears a different colored ribbon in her hair every day, and she always holds her books and her notebook up tight against her stomach with both arms. She whispered, but Charlotte's whisper carries about 10 feet. So we had an audience. Nora, I heard about your grades, your averages. They must be ruined. What are you going to do? Do you think you're going to get left back? I couldn't stand it if you got left back. 
I smiled as best as I could. It's okay, Charlotte. I won't get left back. I promise. Well, she said, if there's anything I can help you with, just ask me, okay? Because I got almost straight A's and I would help you if you wanted, okay? I looked at hard at Charlotte, testing for acid in her sweet face or her eyes. Not a trace, only sweetness. Charlotte meant every word and she wasn't bragging about her grades, just stating a fact. So I smiled and said, thanks, Charlotte. That means a lot to me. And it did. Charlotte truly felt bad for me. She helped me remember that as far as everyone else was concerned, I was going through a crisis, an ordeal. Because for everyone else, it was an absolute fact that fifth grade grades mattered. My grades made me look like that dead Cirrus Carolinius on the road out in front of the school. And in less than three hours, Dr. Trendler was going to get out his measuring tools and try to figure out just how flat the squirrel really was. Chapter nine, cornered. It was raining at lunchtime, so I got a pass to go to the library. Indoor recess in the gym was always noisy and confused, and the library was always just the opposite. I went to a table near the back wall to do my math homework. I was whipping through the sixth problem when a voice said, Nora, I jumped a mile. I hadn't heard Mrs. Byrne come up behind me. She smiled and said, sorry to startle you. Sometimes this carpet is almost too quiet. May I talk with you over at the front desk? Sure, I said, and I got up and followed her. She said, back here, and she motioned me behind the desk to the long work counter. I want you to read something I printed out yesterday. Then she handed me 10 or 15 pieces of paper that were stapled together. I knew instantly, I knew what I was holding. I pretended to read the first sheet, but I hardly saw the words. My thinking had kicked up into overdrive. I was in trouble. I needed a way out. I needed a major distraction, something like a fire drill or maybe an earthquake. It took a lot of effort not to start breathing fast, and I was afraid my cheeks would turn bright red. I turned to the second page and then the third, barely reading, just stalling for time. Finally, I had to say something, so I said, it looks like a list. Mrs. Burns said, turn to page five, Nora, and read some of the entries out loud, but please keep your voice down. I skipped ahead and started to read. MIT Internet Registration Homepage. Issues in Lightwave Theory. JaneGoodall.org Homepage. Fuel Cell Technology Comes of Age. Hybrid Vehicles Find New Homes. Cold Fusion Anomalies. Field Museum Egyptology Department. Richard Feynman's lecture on Mrs. Burns interrupted and said, thank you, Nora, that's enough. Can you tell me what you've been reading? Something from the computer, right? I looked into her face. She wasn't buying my innocent act, not even a little bit. Mrs. Burns shook her head. It's more like something from your computer, Nora. More precisely, that information is stored under your login account on the Media Center's main server. So did you guys know that when you look things up on the computers at school, it's all on a server and the school can access it. So they know what you look up. So this librarian has done a little research and she knows that Nora has been looking up all these very complex, complicated things. Um, and I think that's of interest to her. I hope it doesn't ruin Nora's plan, whatever her plan is. We'll see. When I began to back up the system yesterday afternoon, one terminal was still active, the one in the corner. I went to shut it down, but something on the internet browser caught my eye. Something about the Connecticut mastery test. I didn't remember any teachers using that terminal, so I checked the login name, and it was you, Nora. You forgot to log out when you went to the meeting in Mrs. Hackney's office. I know you might think I was prying, but it's part of my job to monitor the internet activity of all student accounts. So I looked around a little. Mrs. Byrne looked me right in the eye. She said, what you're holding there are the first 13 pages of a 159 page document that lists the web pages you have visited or accessed since the beginning of this school year. Your files are using five gigabytes of storage space on the server. Do you know what that means, Nora? I think you do, but 
but I'll tell you anyway. It means so far this school year, you have gathered more information for access and retrieval than all the rest of the fourth and fifth grade students combined. Just glancing through the web pages of the links you have in your hands there, it appears you have done extensive research on alternative energy sources. You have been trading emails with a primate expert at the Jane Goodall Institute. You have a keen interest in educational theory, and apparently you have been enrolled in a college-level astronomy course over the internet at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Again, she paused. Then, speaking slowly, Mrs. Burns said, but the most interesting thing to me is the fact that you are the child who failed her basic internet research project three weeks ago and therefore got a D in library skills. So, Nora, how should I be thinking about all this new information? She's been caught, hasn't she? She is obviously very intelligent. She's looking up some really complex things, having conversations, taking a college class online. Um, I wonder where Mrs. Byrne will take this. Mrs. Byrne had me. I was trapped. When an animal gets backed into a corner, zoologists say the animal will usually choose one of three instinctive responses. Instinctive responses are based on instinct, so they happen automatically. But I've never considered myself an animal. I wasn't going to fight or run away or play dead. This was not the time for instincts. I had to think my way out of this corner. It's not a coincidence that cartoons show an idea as a light bulb, because when an idea hits, it feels like someone has flipped a big switch. An idea blasted me right there in front of Mrs. Byrne, instant light. Yes, I was certainly in a corner, but it wasn't a small corner, and I didn't really have to get out of it. There was plenty of room in that corner for someone to join me. In fact, I decided that it actually might be good to have someone else in my corner. Mm, sounds like she might be thinking about an alliance or a partnership here. I'm curious how Mrs. Byrne will react to that idea. Here are your questions for today. Number one, how were the rumors about Nora, her grades, and the big meeting inaccurate? Inaccurate means wrong. So how were they wrong? Number two, who offers to help Nora and why? Why does she offer the help? Number three, what does Mrs. Byrne present or give show to Nora? Those are your three questions for today. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. See you guys later.